Hi, everybody. It is Kim and Penny, and we are lighting up your Fridays with the five stars of Strengthening Families. Today, we're going to be delving into the resilience portion of that, and Penny is going to get us started with the first question. Good afternoon, everyone. So as Kim said, we're talking about resilience in a little more detail. So what we're going to do, we're going to pose a question and we really want you to think about how this applies in your own life and Kim and I'll discuss it um, from our own perspectives because one of the interesting things about these questions is uh, different people will have different thoughts and ideas about how that uh, works and then we'll end with um, sort of asking you to think about a small step uh, that might help you build your resilience skills working towards that goal of parental resilience. All right, so let's get started. The question is, how do you decide enough is enough? And what do you do next? So Kim, I'm gonna ask you to talk about that question from your perspective. Well, um, that's interesting that when you think about enough is enough, I would hope that I don't get there you know, I think about enough is enough, you know, I hope I don't get there, but quite often we do. And I think so part of it for me is realizing the early warning signs that I'm kind of getting close to that mark of, you know, enough is enough. And so realizing maybe where I hold my uh, stress or my tension in my body, if I start gritting my teeth, I know that I'm probably nearing that mark, something is not sitting right with me. And, and, um, Oftentimes, it's it's a, a boundary of, of mine that's that maybe ha is being pushed to the limit. So, um, you know, asking obviously for for space, whether it's emotional space or personal space or um, or something, it, it's not easy to do. But it's a practice I think that's really important that we we do exercise uh, and model so that our kids um, can can learn how to do that as well because it's not an easy thing to do. All right, so just to reflect back, uh, so for you, um, how you know enough is enough is, is quite a physical thing. So you check in with your physical sensation um, mm -hmm. and you relate that to doing for others, the enough is enough part. And then when you, when you, when you take the time to notice the teeth clenching um, or the feeling like you've had it, then you take the time to reiterate your boundaries, your personal boundaries. So asking for space or alone time, um, taking those moments for yourself. Exactly. Okay. And, but the first step is recognizing it because often, you know, we're, we're wanting to do things for others and we're wanting people to like us. And so we're doing, 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 and it gets to the point where we start become getting resentful, 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 and then enough is enough. And so I like to try to find those early warning signs so I don't get there, but that's not often the case, right? As we probably, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's experienced that. Yeah, I agree. I think that's tremendously common for uh, typically females, you know, the nurturing um, instinct is strong and we typically move that. It's not so much a self-focused nurturing right? That idea of nurturing myself and then nurturing others. It's nurture others and then, whoa, I'm to my brink. Oh, I better back off a little bit. And so would you say then that maybe a strategy might be to um, extend the nurturing to yourself first? Even yeah. though I think it starts with well, first realizing it, that I'm there. And then secondly, asking for what I need even if it's asking it of myself, but it might just be space. Like for me, I'm a really talkative person and I'm a real people person, but I actually really enjoy that quiet time. So for me, I go around and I turn off all the radios and all the TVs that everybody else has left on in the house because that's something that they enjoy. But for me, I need that space. So I've carved out a little place in my home that's kind of a, a Zen area where the energy is nice and low and I can just relax there and I retreat to that space. And I actually ask my family for the boundary. When I'm in this space, that's my time to just, you know, 
it's going to be better for you if I if I go in my space and calm down. <laughs> it's going to be better for us all. <laughs> so I, 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 those are some boundaries that I set and I asked for them. And, the, and I think the key is to, we can do this. We can ask for boundaries in a, in a, in a kind way. It doesn't have to be, look, I need my space. You know, it can be kind. And, and maybe if we're asking somebody to step out of our space, we may have to be, you know, kind, but firm, but still kind is what I guess the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. And that's, those are excellent points. And, um, yeah, I love that kind and firm and that you do carve out either a time or a space uh, where your family understands that, um, you know, un unless the house is on fire, don't disturb me or some, you know, an emergency. Um, and you're totally bang on that this sets up our kids, our children, uh, the people we're taking care of to understand that it is important to take care of yourself. And also, you're so right that the primary caregiver is the one who sets the tone in the home. And if we are enough is enough all the time, we often don't have the capacity to care give the way we would, we want to. And um, it, it's just not possible. Yeah. And, and what I like about that too, Penny, is, is when we, um, there's a boundary I didn't set for myself. And that's another one we can talk about is, uh, is uh, technology and, and turning it off and setting boundaries. But um, what I like about that is when we set our own boundaries for ourselves, we're teaching our children how to do it too. When I say, when I go into my retreat area, I, I talk about downtime. And then, you know, for, so that gets, that shows our kids that downtime is necessary because our kids so aren't, are so not used to downtime, you know, being bored. It's something that they're, you know, it's, it's, it's novel to them. So I like to model it uh, for myself so that um, they can see that it's a healthy thing and a necessary thing to, to have downtime. So, yeah, I love how you said that it's, for the kids as well to see a great modeling tool. And so for me, how do I decide enough is enough? Again, to me, that just screams boundaries. And way back when, when I was a new mom, a parent coach talked to me about when you find yourself getting irritated or resentful, it means you haven't enforced a boundary soon enough. And that concept has stuck with me. For like 11 years and and I still have to remind myself oh yeah this isn't about them this is about something that I didn't make clear or I didn't enforce and personally I have um, one of my challenges is micromanaging in my household so I'll tell my kids you know this is my time and and please don't interrupt me and when they interrupt me, I engage. And so for me, this is the practical part of keeping my boundaries is not engaging. So if I say, so I, I'm not a bath person. I mean, I clean, but I don't, I shower over baths, but I've started having a bath because it's one of the places I can lock the door yeah. and I can say when I'm in the bathtub, that's my time. And still, it took both of my children quite some time to stop. Where's the, I can't find my, can I have all of those? And, and initially what I noticed is I would engage in those. And now I've learned to just say, I'm in the tub. What does that mean? And so it's hard. It's very hard to not we have our own habits but so for me yeah maintaining or keeping boundaries and and keeping them firm like you said kindly and firmly but, but not letting them stretch so far that then i'm resentful and annoyed because yeah. like you said that's not good for me and that's not good for anyone and valuing myself enough um, so uh eller knows she's a, a an author and I love her, her work. Uh, she's very um, gentle. But she has a quote that I love, which is, um, 
no, and I'm going to mess it up, but it's something like, you know, um, taking care of yourself doesn't mean me first. It means me too. So it's not selfish or maybe it is selfish and that's okay to take care of your needs as well as taking care of other people's needs. Yeah. As far as what do I do next if I've come to my enough is enough point? Probably like you. I probably take a step back and um, it's kind of funny because one day I got there and I locked myself in my bedroom and I told my kids, do not come in here. I need a mental health break is what I said. And I heard okay. my husband come in and I heard him walking down the hall and I heard my, my son say, don't go in there. Mom's having a mental health break. <laughs> and it was so funny. Oh, um, you truly were. I was. You truly were. And that was accurate. And I love that they honored it. Yeah. They honored it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was probably an example of letting it get a little too far, but it's never too late to just take that step back and honor your own, your own boundaries. Yeah. I think that's well, crucial. I think the reality is we're, we're going to lose it. There are times where we can't be per perfect parents all, all the time. We, we just can't. And, and it's, and so when we lose it and we have to take that mental health break, and our kids see us do that and so and are supporting us through it you know what's that teaching them that's teaching them that it's okay when they lose it too because inevitably they're going to as well that's just human nature right um yeah so there's learning in in every step of it every process there's value in every every part of that and it's the beautiful part of being a human raising tiny humans is you have all of these opportunities to teach with your actions instead of your words. And those are the most powerful lessons, right? Is I might say you need to take a break, you know, don't snap at your sister or whatever, go take some time. And when they see me doing it, that's just solidifies the message that we need to sometimes remove ourselves to, to, to stop doing harm to others um, that we, there, there's times when we just can't stop. We have to leave the situation. Um, and I yeah, think yeah. That's and, that's and that's ourselves, that's even. That's you know, you, you were sometimes we just need to uh, take a break to, you know, just regroup. And that will lead us into our next week question, I think. Um, don't you think that that's a good segue, Penny? Yeah, I think. Because next week we're going to be talking about what sort of um, what things we are able to do to um, take care of ourselves as as caretakers of others. Mm -hmm. Yes, next week we're going to delve into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So as I promised at the beginning, I'm going to invite you to think about what we talked about today. Um, what is your enough? What do you do when you've reached your enough? Do you find that your enoughs are farther, getting farther and farther? Do you keep your boundaries firm? So think about those things. And if you feel like you want to do some practicing around this area, take one small step this week to practice holding firm on a boundary that you might normally stretch out a little bit. Uh, and using that kind but firm model, uh, Maybe try in, in one situation, something small, where you can hold your boundary and um, address your own needs um, as well as those around you. So yeah. have a great weekend, everyone. Um, hopefully the sun shines on you and all of us. And uh, we will see you back here next Friday at uh, 1 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. Bye.